Hey guys, got something a little different for you, but I think this will be fun. I know a lot of you guys are in love with physical media, myself included, so I'm going to do an unboxing retro game video. So i got to give a special shout out to my father-in-law, Vincent. Thank you for sending this. He's clearing out a bunch of stuff in his house, apparently, and he's got a bunch of old PC games. So these are most likely from the 80s and 90s. I have no idea what's in here. So just to give you like a little history, I know a lot of you guys like games. All of us, you know, probably played Sega Nintendos in the 80s and 90s. But the real nerds played PC games. That was me. And I remember our first family PC, it was like a 286. Actually, it might have been like an 86 if that was even a thing. It literally didn't have a hard drive. It had five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. 512 kilobytes of RAM. And I think we upgraded it to like 640. So it was pretty damn pathetic. But you'd be surprised on uh, some of the computer games you could play on there. But anyway, I thought this would be fun to see what's in here. I like those videos on YouTube where guys will kind of like, um, you know, it's almost like a treasure hunt in a way. Where if they go to the flea market or if they, uh, they share some stuff they got at the used game store or whatever. So anyway, I wanted to do one of these videos. It's not obviously not going to be a thing I do that often. But I have an opportunity because I got this box of games and I'm going to go through them. For the first time with you, and it'll be fun to see what we have. My, <laughs> come on, that's my cat. That's that's John Pierre. He's interested too. All right, first off, Riven, the sequel to Mist. A lot of you guys probably played Mist back in the day. I know that's a pretty popular PC game. Look at this though, Fry's Electronics. Oh, so this was actually purchased on January 30th of 2000. So I guess this is like a newer one, even though. You know, obviously that's still 22 years old. I never really got into Mist, though I did like adventure games. I never played this either. All right, what else do we got? Oh, we do have, speaking of Mist, Mist, the Masterpiece Edition. These big box PC games are pretty cool, by the way. They were like all, you know, pretty intricate and detailed. They got like a flap here. So, yeah, that's cool, man. Okay, what else? Uh, Body Works and Adventure in Anatomy. So, I don't know. Maybe they'll get kids more interested. Oh, look at that. Uh, the official strategy guide for the prequel to Riven. Missed. Number Munchers. Munch on Math. Yeah, so these kind of things were designed back in the day to make kids excited about computers and excited about learning by ma turning them into games. I played a couple of uh, these things back in the day. All right, Mummy, Tomb of the Pharaoh. Yeah, this is another one that I never played. This is probably more like 2000, I would think. What do we got here? Heart of China. See, these are, these are the games that I really like, these kind of adventure games. Original stereo soundtrack, breathtaking graphics. You know, the graphics actually don't even look that bad today. Like, kind of like that cartoon quality. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> like, look, look at this stuff, man. It's crazy. Look at these three and a half inch uh, floppy drives. And this doesn't even like look official. This like like somebody pirated it, if you look at the label. But, no, it's the real deal. All right, Apache Longbow Assault. So this game actually has 3D graphics. They don't look that bad. This is about up there with PS1, PS2. But these kind of PC games, I'm not that interested. I don't think most people are. Like these smaller box ones, you know? I think a lot of people lost interest in PC games, and they just got into... Uh, that's when consoles started catching up, you know, like PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. You could just get your fix as far as, like, graphics and everything else. But, no, a lot of people aren't that interested in these smaller box games. Uh, what do we got here? We got Mist. A, uh, I guess just the story. Oh, it's the prequel. It's the prequel to the game. That's interesting. Oh, look at that. Another copy of, of Tomb of the Mummy. So, I don't know how he ended up with two copies of it, but now they're mine. <laughs> Mist 4 Revelations. I didn't even know they, they kept making Miss games, to be honest. This is another one of those, uh, you know, smaller box PC games. They're not, not as interesting, I don't think. 
Another small box PC game. It looks similar to Mist. Aura. All right, what do we got here? Orbits, Voyage Through the Solar System. So again, a lot of this PC software was designed as like educational type things. Sometimes they tie them into games. Sometimes they would not even be tied into games. This looks like something you would just use to learn about the solar system. EverQuest 3. Wow, these graphics, man. This was definitely back in the 80s. Sierra put that out. They were a great adventure game maker competing with Lucasfilm, who later changed their name to LucasArts. Those were my favorite games, by the way. They made, uh, you know, Secret of Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, Maniac Mansion, things like that. You could even get, like, some updated versions on, on like, the Xbox and PlayStation now, so those are kind of cool to revisit. Sor Sorcerian. Sorcerian. Wow, this is another old school. You can tell by the graphics. That's about 8-bit Nintendo looking type graphics. Another game by Sierra. They put out like a lot of these fantasy type games back in the day. Wild Wheels. Yeah, you can tell looking at the graphics on this. Another one. Actually, 1991. I'm surprised. It looks like something from the 80s. Oh, going back with Mist, there's Mist 3. Okay, so in this collection we had Mist, we had Riven, the sequel to Mist, we have Mist 3, and I showed you Mist 4 earlier. So, yeah, they really milked the hell out of this franchise. And they even marketed the new sequel to Mist and Riven. Riddle of the Sphinx. Again, this one has 3D graphics. This is kind of a newer game. Very, like, mist-like, but I guess, you know, in Egypt. Speaking of Egypt, Egypt, 1156 BC, Tomb of the Pharaoh. It's another one of those adventure games. Sensing a theme here. Okay. Mystery of the Mummy. This guy's really into Egypt. <laughs> Oh, this is put out by the Adventure Company. That's cool. Oh, inspired by the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This one's actually kind of interesting. This one it interests me. The Colonel's Bequest. Roberta Williams. That name's familiar. I know she did like a lot of the King's Quest uh, video games. So this one, this was back 1989. Okay, what else we got? We got, uh, speaking of King's Quest, here we go right here. King's Quest, Mask of Eternity. This looks like one of the newer ones. I didn't really like when the PC games, or I guess even the console games, started to go with, with their 3D graphics. I guess early on, and I guess they had to start somewhere, but these games are really hard to play these days. I mean, we're spoiled with what we have now with uh, the lifelike graphics. But, you know, I guess if they didn't start making them back then, we couldn't, we wouldn't have what we have now. I actually still prefer 2D games a lot of the time. Uh, Nova 9. This almost kind of looks like um, a Wing Commander type game. Except you're like, it looks like you're, you know, like a hovercraft on a planet instead of like a spaceship flying through space. Oh, look at this one, Iceman. I remember actually seeing this in the video game store. This was one that I always actually kind of wanted. It's from the creator of the Police Quest series from Sierra. <laughs> A 3D advent animated adventure game. Look at that. A global oil shortage, radical terrorists, international crisis, and one man can make the difference. It's kind of like what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. You know who that one man that can make the difference is, by the way? Steven Seagal. Hopefully he will uh, make peace between the two regions. Oh, here's one. Wing Commander Privateer. I remember the Wing Commander games. I actually really enjoyed those quite a bit. And then part three was when I think they used Mark Hamill from Star Wars and they, it was like on CD-ROM and they had like, you know, shot music live action sequences for the game. But I didn't mind Wing Commander 1 and 2. I kind of like the... Uh, just the hand-drawn artwork, but Wing Commander 3 was a big deal back in the day, but I don't know what Privateer is. I guess it's just a spin-off. Uh, the New Adventures of the Time Machine. 
Again, this is another game that is very mist-like. Firehawk. Exhilarating arcade action. 1990. It's almost crazy how bad the graphics were even in 1990. Wow. Here we go. King's Quest V. An experience the whole family can enjoy. And it's kind of crazy, like, depending on your computer, uh, the performance difference. Like, for example, if you were playing in 16 color compared to, like, 256 color, it's like night and day. It's the same game. But if you had a crappy computer, you know, you kind of played a crappy looking version of the game. Well, yeah, back in the day, man. I mean, I guess even now, too, with PC games. Tells you all the requirements, you know. So 640K. So I could have played it. You know, I, I told you I upgraded from 512 to 640. Hard disk. Mm, I didn't have the hard disk drive. 286 or better. Recommended mouse. You know, they're recommending, like, the Game Blaster for audio and all this other stuff. So, yeah. Oh, and here's a series of files. Oh, there's... We'll go over that in a minute. Uh, what do you got here? Gunman Chronicles. Uru, Ages Beyond Mist. I guess it's just a spin-off from that universe. Star Siege... Unverse. Okay, another 3D game. So it looks like he had a lot of games that, uh, you know, were 2000 and up. Kind of get to the, the 3D type stuff. King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella. Hey, let me know in the comment section, man, if you guys played any of these uh, adventure games like King's Quest or Police Quest. I actually prefer Roger Wilco's Space Quest. Oh, here's old school King's Quest One. King's Quest Two. Oh, speaking of what I really enjoy, Space Quest Four. Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers. These games. You know what was really funny about these? I think it's really Space Quest Six. Maybe maybe some before that is on CD-ROM and the narrator speaking would always make fun of the main character. It's actually pretty funny. Just talking crap about him the whole game. Alright, the Omega Stone. Riddle of the Sphinx 2. It's just another one of those games that are kind of like Mist. We got Timescape, Journey to Pompeii. Another game kind of like Mist. And then Naval Warfare Collection. Three complete games. F-18 Simulator. And then there's like a submarine game. I never really got into these. I'll save the best for last in this box, by the way. The Secret of Monkey Island. I freaking loved this game as a kid. In fact, I think I got this for my 10th birthday. It was such a great birthday. I remember I was into these Lucasfilm games, these adventure games. They were amazing because I felt like you had your Nintendo and Sega, but they had a certain type of game, whereas these created, like, a real world that you can explore, and you got to kind of use your brain more by trying to solve these puzzles and, and putting different, like, uh, items together or how they fit into, like, different sets and uh, interacting with characters, trying to get hints. So it felt like you were really transported to, a, to like, a real world, like, an, another world, whereas, like, in, in a regular video game on Nintendo or Sega, you're moving from, like, left to right, and, uh, you know, just killing stuff. But this was more like a thinking man's game. And they did it in a pretty comedic way. So, you know, on my 10th birthday, I remember I got this on the way to playing mini golf. And then, like, it was fun playing mini golf. But I couldn't wait to get home to play this. Because previously, I had played Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade put out by Lucasfilm. And it was such an amazing adventure. And I loved the movie, too. But then, like, trying a new one. This came out after, you know, had better graphics. It... This was really like the pinnacle of graphic adventure games. I, in my opinion, they've done a lot better work than like Sierra. Even Sierra was pretty good though. But yeah, look at this man. Five and a quarter inch discs. We got the book and everything. So this is pretty much exactly like the one I had for IBM. 
not Macintosh. I remember actually buying the sequel, the Monkey Island 2, The Chuck's Revenge, and I think they only had it like on three and a half inch floppy disk drives, so I couldn't even play it on my computer, but I, I, I you know, cherished it, would just read the box and the book, wishing I could play it someday. And I did actually end up playing it at one of my friend's house. He had like a 386, like his dad had that computer and installed it on the hard drive, and I was able to play it there. But <laughs> yeah, I was never really, for the longest time, able to play the sequel myself at home. But anyway, looking at these folders, what is this? Life and Death. The history of surgery. Okay, so I guess I guess he doesn't have didn't have the box for it, but we got the game. This Heart of China. Oh, okay, so the instruction materials to that adventure game. Riddle of the Sphinx. Oh, so these are I guess some hints that he used to to get through the games. You have to take notes on some of these games. King's Quest 3. Here's a hint book. Was this Space Quest? Space Quest 4. Oh, I remember some of these games would utilize these things to prevent piracy. So unless you had the legit copy and the, like these little things you would have to do, like with the instruction booklet or whatever, you couldn't even access certain parts of the game are even started. Monkey Island even had like some wheel thing you had to spin. Uh, okay, this is just Quest for Glory stuff. Stellar 7. Red o Hunt for Red October. Nothing too interesting in here. It's a tank game. King's Quest 1. <laughs> This is funny, man. Again, I mean, who does this anymore? I used to do stuff like this. Whereas, like, you almost kind of have to map out the game to get through it. Like I said, some of these adventure games, they're, they're like thinking man's games, you know? They're not just pick up and play and button mash some stuff and kill a bunch of people. You literally, like, had to put some real time and effort trying to get through this stuff, which that uh, is pretty funny. It does bring me back to my childhood. Sorcerion. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's pretty funny, man. But anyway, let me know in the comments below if you guys were into playing these old school computer games back in the day, which one are your favorites. If you like this video, let me know because I will do a separate video where I'll show off all my big box computer games. Really cool stuff there. Um, anyway, let me know if that's something you guys want to see and let me know if you were into these kind of games, etc. So... Until next time.